Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Flavor and Fiction. Okay, so the category for the challenge this week was a play. And I chose uh, Gem of the Ocean by August Wilson. And I know a lot of you know who August Wilson is already. Um, you've probably seen Fences. Uh, well, it turns out Fences is part of a 10 play cycle that August Wilson wrote. It's called the Pittsburgh Cycle. And I heard that Denzel actually signed on to produce all 10 of the plays. So I'm looking forward to it. So Gem of the Ocean is actually the first installment of this 10 play series. So I'm really excited to share with you because the secret ingredient for this one, I had, I had just a couple of choices. I had biscuits, which I've already done. I had uh, chitlins. No. Or whiskey. So we're going to be using this Jim Beam as our secret ingredient. And so we're gonna make some whiskey meatballs. So get ready. So Jump in the Ocean is a short play and this is kind of a easy recipe so this will probably be a short video, I hope. Okay. So the book is set in 1904 in Pittsburgh and there's this 200 something year old woman named uh, Aunt Esther. And she's like the community healer and kind of oracle that people come to for spiritual cleansing and guidance and and, and healing. Uh, so one day this man named Citizen Barlow shows up at her door. Um, he's He comes from down south and he's committed some terrible crime that he doesn't share at first and he's looking for some sort of absolution. So he comes to her for help, which a lot of people do. At the same time, there's an incident happening down at the mill where most of the African Americans work because you know you have all these former slaves who don't have any experience with anything um, and now that they're free they're kind of put back into an indentured servitude um, sort of like sharecropping only it's at the mill so the mill will say okay we'll pay you $20 a week and you can live here but your rent is $25 a week so you work to owe um, <clears throat> which is a system that we've seen throughout history. So what happens at the mill is that this man is accused of stealing a bucket of nails and he runs out into, um, into like the middle of this lake. He's running from the law. He runs to the lake and then he ends up being surrounded and he keeps denying that he did this thing. And instead of, he doesn't know how to swim, but instead of coming out of the lake, he ends up drowning while holding on to his claims of innocence. So before we get into what all of this means, I'm gonna start with our little recipe. So our first ingredient is half a cup of brown sugar packed. So I packed it on in there. Oh, <laughs> that's special. Okay, then it says half a cup of ketchup heaping. So here's our ketchup. I'm guessing it's heaping. Okay. Then a teaspoon of fresh lemon juice. Here we go. All right, here's a teaspoon of that. Okay. Then we do a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce or Worcestershire or Worcestershire, whatever. There's that. Okay, so it calls for a quarter cup of whiskey and I think this is about that, right? It looks about, whatever, we're gonna use all of it. Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, here we come. Woohoo! This looks so gross. You can just mix all this up. Barf! That whiskey's making it smell good. And a little potent. Whew! It gets in your nostrils. And this is what it should kind of look like. 
It says to put in a pound of meatballs. This is my first time using this brand, this Angus beef meatballs. But it looks good. So put in a pound of frozen meatballs. This bag is uh, 1.25 pounds, so I'll have to guesstimate. Okay, so I just withheld about five meatballs. So then you want to pour this on top until you scrape all that out the bowl there. Can't waste that good whiskey sauce. I think I'm getting a contact tie. Just make sure meatballs get a little coated. Okay, so it says to put it on high for the first hour. I uh, put it on high and you're supposed to stir occasionally. I may go uh, run and wash my hair real quick because it's about that time, y'all can see. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave it. But I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about this story. But there's a man named Caesar and they appoint him as um, a police officer. So they give one black man some power to make, to make other black people afraid and of course all the power goes to his head and he looks at you know his family and all the other black people like well if I made it here then there's no excuse why you can't make it and we all know people like that Kanye <clears throat> I mean August Wilson is just he's such a poignant storyteller and you're really gonna get into this story um, so it turns out that Citizen Barlow after um, Aunt Esther um, helps him through his healing with letting him know that he he has to decide whether to forgive himself or not because the truth is remember the man who died in the lake with the bag of nails citizen barlow is the one who actually stole him i mean you you got to read this story it's very complex but it's also very relatable it's uh but that's august wilson okay so uh i just washed my hair and i'm exhausted um, I turned the meatballs down to low and let me tell you, I took the top off to stir it. That thing is pungent. Like that whiskey hit me in my left nostril. I don't know if I can take this to work for lunch tomorrow like I wanted to because I feel like I'm going to use the microwave and someone's going to come up behind me and be like, oh my God, what's that smell? Somebody's drinking on the job. Trust me because people at my job are special. It could happen. Um, unless you're watching in which case love you guys you're probably wondering why is it named gem of the ocean so aunt esther when she tries to help uh in order to heal citizen barlow she has to kind of put him under and she helps him travel back in time to a slave ship called gem of the ocean um back to his ancestors and he feels their struggle and their pain he he feels what they're feeling and he takes the gem of the ocean to the city of bones which is where people have crossed over and there he meets his ancestors and he also meets the man who died uh being accused of stealing the bag of nails that he stole um and there he asks for forgiveness and when he's forgiven and brought back to the land of the living he has a whole new um view of the world and of himself and really, I feel like the book is trying to convey that you don't know where you're going, you're going unless you know where you've been. But I really, I hope Denzel does this one next. I don't know what he's working on, but it was really good. And I, um, I know that Felicia Rashad played Aunt Esther on Broadway. So I'm hoping when Denzel brings the movie, he can bring Felicia Rashad back. That'd be great. Okay, guys, here we go. I have on my plate a single meatball to try. Okay, I'm gonna cut this baby in half and then again in half. It smells really good. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm because I just had to give up. Uh, Give it time to let the whiskey cook off a little bit. That's really good. I'm bringing it for lunch tomorrow. 
I don't care what anyone has to say. It's delicious. Woo. Oh, I guess I should close out before I stuff my face. Well, thanks for joining me for another episode of Flavor and Fiction. But um, it's late now. I'm going to go put my hair in some twists and go to bed because I'm exhausted. But anyway, I'm going to put the recipe and the link to the book in the details below. And uh, be sure to subscribe. Thanks, guys. Thank <laughs> you.